Hey guys, we're in Western Canada. That's the Portman Bridge over there. Connects Coquitlam with Surrey. The beautiful Fraser River right here. We're checking out the Stromer ST3. This bike is designed around the ST5. You'll notice the frame looks very similar and it still has through axles 15 millimeter up front, 12 millimeter in the rear, boost hub spacing, an integrated display on the top tube. To me, this is like a super bike. It's not as light or I guess standardized as a lot of other bicycles. You can see that in the stem, um, but it is high speed. It is quiet. It is solid feeling. You can see the battery is actually integrated into that down tube, very hidden. Really beautiful design. It's got a gearless direct drive hub motor where most of the bikes these days are going to like planetary gear. They're a little bit lighter, more compact. They freewheel efficiently. This one gives you regenerative braking, which is really cool. And of course this has integrated lights, really bright lights and the rear goes bright when you, when you do stop. So they're kind of taking the very fancy approach and the price definitely reflects that. This thing is $7,500 roughly USD. As shown here, about $8,500 because we've got this uh, custom made Ren air suspension fork inverted, meaning the stanchion is at the bottom versus the top. So it's extra stiff, not as adjustable as I had, had hoped. You'll see there's no like clickers up here or in the base. All you've really got is a valve to raise and lower the air pressure in the fork. And I actually don't see any stickers or indicators about uh, pressure rating for that. Um, so that for me, that was a little bit, it was a little bit confusing. You know, I, I did find like a QR code on the side of um, the, the right upper and I haven't scanned that, but that's something you might have to, you know, tinker with a little bit. Of course, these strummers are sold primarily through shops. And in North America, I feel like the support for strummers changed a little bit over the years. They used to have an office in Southern California and I went and it, I mean, it was pretty cool. And like, of course, these guys are really into bikes and like fancy cars and stuff. And, but really this is a Swiss brand. And so I think they're predominantly sold in Europe. In the past, I read that their headquarters are run completely on solar and that they charge all of the Stromer e-bike batteries using solar energy before they ship them out, which is kind of cool. So I've been extremely thorough in recording all the stats and measurements that I found for this bike on my own, okay? So this is a black high step. They do have more of a step through or mid step frame as well. They have three frame sizes. This is medium and they have black or white for the ST3. And then again, this suspension fork is an option. And then the stem, you can get kind of a, an upright comfort stem or more of an aggressive stem. We've got these semi swept back handlebars, ergon locking grips, ergon saddle. I love that the high step and step through frames both have bottle cage bosses. Take note that step through only comes in size medium. And if you want the different handlebars, uh, that's something that you choose later in the configuration phase. Same thing for the trailer plate and optional compact charger, although it says those are not available in the USA. I didn't see a slap guard on this. I was expecting to see maybe just a sticker or something, but maybe it's not quite as necessary given that we've got the one-way clutch still at high speed. And when you're going over bumpy terrain, it'd be a bummer to see that get nicked up. It's something you can touch up on your own. 11 to 42 tooth spread, 11 sprockets. That's, that's pretty great. It means you're gonna have a lot more options for pedal speed and cadence when you're going up to 45 kilometers per hour, roughly 28 miles per hour. Sometimes on the streets, you can get this licensed. And in Europe, actually, uh, that's, that's what you'd wanna do. Depending on which model you get, you could get a little license plate. And this rear light actually shines down and lights it up. So again, much, much more like a vehicle. And one of the trade-offs that come with a design like this is that, you know, maybe the licensing is a factor, the price, and, uh, you know, I also feel like the weight. So this is 71.8 pounds as shown here, and that does include the suspension fork as well as the mirror. That is heavy. You know, the weight is fairly well situated forward, but it's still a heavy bike. These are moped rated Pirelli tires. These are 27.5 by 2.35, so fairly wide, definitely extra thick, reducing the potential for, for getting flats. And then we got the tire pressure here. It's rated up to 43.5 PSI and the lower is 29. So there's a, there's a decent spread there. You could lower it a little bit and get nice 
a little bit of extra comfort and vibration dampening if you're a lighter rider like myself. So dialing in that fork, dialing in the, the tire pressure, getting the ergonomics all set up right. I, I actually might go up a size if I were to buy this bike for myself. Again, I'm on the medium. I'm 5'9 and roughly 135 pounds. So for me, the bike feels, it feels I'm a little more upright, even though I have the more aggressive sporty stem here. Um, I would, I'm raising my, my saddle kind of as high as it can go, and I'm sort of maxing that out. 31.6 millimeters on that seat post, by the way, and they do have this tapered insert shim. So the reason I'm telling you this is you might want to get a suspension seat post as well. Stormer does offer that as like an upgrade option on some of their other bikes, like the ST5, and they're using like the Connect suspension post. So you can always buy that yourself and just stick it on later. Some of the other differentiators between the ST3 and the ST5 is that one has electronic gear shifting versus this is physical. You've got cables down here. I'm just gonna walk around the bike and point out some of the other features that I like. We've got these nice uh, platform, aluminum alloy, really solid pedals, black. They look nice. Standard 170 millimeter crank arms. This is hydroformed tubing. You can see the welding right here, but really smooth, interesting frame design, sort of boxy a little bit, which is that iconic look. Of course, the integrated lights and this, this interesting USB charging port right here. So if you plug into that, you could potentially be using your phone which does mount right here on top of the stem. There's this rubberized plug. You just take this out and so you can get sort of one of those twist lock phone mounts. I haven't done that myself. I found their app to be a little bit limited. It doesn't actually show your current speed. It doesn't really let you use GPS to plot courses. It's more like seeing what the settings are for the bike and then changing those if you want to. It's, it's not something that I would be looking at while I was riding. Although I might use, you know, Google Maps or Waze or something like that while navigating. And again, it's nice that you can charge your phone while you're doing that. The only downside is that visually the cord protrudes from the bottom here and you might have to wrap it around or, you know, bind it up with a little twist tie or something like that. Uh, also, the lights are on at all times on this bike. And again, a metal housing, really nice headlight there, but it's on all the time. I, I couldn't really turn that off and that was kind of annoying to me. I don't feel like it's gonna drain the battery super fast or anything. And maybe it's a great safety feature considering this is high speed, but uh, you know, to me, it's, it's nice to have control over the bike. So continuing on, we've got these really wide, very sturdy uh, aluminum alloy tubular fenders, meaning there's like metal on top and then inside there are these, there's a second layer, actually two struts. So it's really rigid. It doesn't rattle around a whole lot. And you can see how they're attached here to the base of the suspension. So they actually travel with the wheel. It's not like they're gonna shake loose. They aren't plastic, they aren't cheap. Although they do have these plastic end caps probably to keep uh, the fender from getting sharp or if you kick it. While we're down here, I wanna point out um, this, this plastic shield here on the base of the down tube. It, it is coming off a little bit. I, I don't know why I've been very careful with this bike, but to me, for such an expensive bike, it was like, oh, that's kind of a bummer. You know, it is a demo bike and they're shipping it internationally. That is a horn right there. So it goes like meep. And they've changed the, the sound of, of the horn a little bit from the older Stromers, which I appreciate. This actually sounds really nice. And I'll be sure to, to show you that later. Again, the narrow wide chain ring for me, 52 tooth. That's a real, that's a real standout, nice feature. Kickstand, this is center mounted. So, you know, if you, pedal backwards, you get pedal lock. Or if you're backing the bike up, it's gonna the cycle those cranks and you're gonna get the same thing. I'm, I'm really appreciating more companies are moving the kickstand towards the rear, even though it gets a little bit crowded with the disc brake caliper and everything. And you can see the motor power plug right here. But I like to have the kickstand there because you don't get pedal lock and it can support the rear rack. And in this case, this is a really nice custom rear rack. I was talking about how sturdy and nice the fenders are. Well, this rack actually connects directly to the fender in two places, and that acts as a support for the fender as well as a support for the rack. And there isn't additional metal here. Like I've seen some other fenders where there's like a metal plate that goes to where the rack interfaces and then it stops. This is just the fender. So the fender itself is super, super sturdy. And so connects in one, two, three, four places. We've got this extra support arm right here. Very clean and beautiful. 
max weight rating of 22.5 kilograms. It does have the rack time slide interface for some really cool aftermarket accessories. Not as easy to find sometimes in North America, which is a bummer. And child seats, I'm not sure if they're gonna work super well just because of how narrow this is, but it will work with panniers and this is gonna provide a nice little like lock point just to keep the panniers from flopping around. Uh, so anyway, 22.5 kilograms, that's about 50 pounds. I think it's it's a pretty good setup. You know, it's, it's clean enough that you're not gonna want to remove it if you aren't using bags or anything, uh, but it's still gonna be very functional, maybe a little bit limited for a trunk bag. There's some gravel around here I'm gonna ride on a little bit later just to show you what it sounds like and demonstrate how solid these fenders are. I mean, they're just, they're really nice. And then I wanna talk about the brakes because high speed means you, you need some really good braking performance. TRP, three finger levers. They do have the ball end, which is a requirement for speed pedal X in Europe, kind of like motorcycles. So they were having this issue where people would crash at high speed and get stabbed by the end of the brake lever. And so for motorcycles, that's a requirement. And for speed pedal X, it's the same thing. And I suppose it keeps your fingers from slipping off this way too, if you're, you know, you're really on unstable terrain and just trying to stop the bike. Nice cable routing right here. A lot of this is internally routed directly through the stem, that's kind of unique. Again, it limits the options for aftermarket upgrades on adjustable angle stems or longer, shorter, but at least Stromer gives you those two options, sort of the upright or the more aggressive down. Neoprene wraps on these. Again, kind of interesting that I, there's not a neoprene wrap down there on the chain stay to protect it. Maybe this demo bike just didn't have it. The cool thing about these brake levers is that they activate regen on the motor so it starts to capture some energy when you're slowing down especially if you're going down a big hill and they activate a bright mode on the rear light so it just it cre creates a little bit more visibility and safety these are hydraulic and they do have adjustable reach in here so you can kind of adjust this set screw and bring them in or out depending on how big your hands are and that's really nice considering the bike comes in three different sizes huge 203 millimeter carbon steel rotors front and rear so it's going to cool quickly it's going to give you a, a great mechanical advantage over the wheel itself and then we've got quad piston caliper up front again more surface area spreading out the mechanical force providing good stopping power a lot of your your momentum when you're going it's sort of you're going to shift the weight forward as you brake and so that's why they usually have a bigger rotor up front and maybe the better calipers up front. In this case, we've got two really big rotors and then we've just got a standard dual piston caliper in the rear, but it's fairly big pistons. So again, quad piston, dual piston, very nice, 203 millimeters. And then there's that, that star sort of hex bolt for the rear wheel. And you, you'll notice that it, I guess maybe it threads into this side. It doesn't go all the way through. It looks like we've got a replaceable derailleur hanger down here. And then the torque sensing design. And in addition to torque sensing, it has a gyroscopic incline sensor and an accelerometer. So this thing is measuring more than a standard torque sensor, which is nice. That means depending on the terrain you're riding, the bike's gonna give you more or less support. If you're climbing, it's not gonna make you work extra, extra hard pedaling. It's gonna sense that, oh, you probably need a little bit of extra help to climb. And the same thing applies for going down a hill. It's gonna give you a little bit more regen support, regeneration to fill that battery pack up a little bit and extend your range. You can also manually control regen by holding the minus key, which we'll talk about later. You get five levels of recoup, and this would allow you to just slow yourself down on a really big hill without having to pull the brake levers, just sort of manually override and capture as much energy as possible. It's very dynamic. It's a smart system, and that's the whole the whole Omni setup that we'll talk about here in a minute. It works pretty well, but on the flats here, as I was riding around, it just felt like I, the bike feels a little heavy to me, right? It's it's like, and it is, it is a heavier bike, you know, just the way it sways and everything, but just kind of getting started. I was shifting gears pretty actively, and I, I guess I was hoping for a little bit more boost, but the cool thing is you can actually use the app to dial up um, and dial back how, how much power it applies off the line. I think they've probably got this thing set at sort of moderate because you could burn through that battery pretty quickly with a, a class three speed pedal like that's heavy like this. Uh, one of the things the website says is you can get up to 90 miles uh, per charge, but I really think that's the lower levels of assist, and there are three. So the lowest level of assist is sort of, it's, it's not very satisfying. It's, it sort of offsets the weight of the bike. Um, 
I'm definitely up in like two or three, and especially because it's a torque sensor, you can be in the higher levels of assist and still not apply a lot of pressure. And then it's a very smooth, supportive ride. As someone with sensitive knees, I just found that I had to like exert a little bit more pressure than I was expecting to really get that speed and that torque feeling. So I'm gonna turn the bike on and talk a little bit about the battery. It's sort of hidden actually to turn it on and I had it on before we came out here so it's sort of waking up again which is handy it just sort of goes to sleep and I'm going to hit the back button here you can see there's lock off sensor move menu eject to even get that menu to start once it falls asleep there's a button right here it's really hidden it's this rubberized button on the bottom of that top tube right there at first I was like oh is that a power button right here but no this is actually to remove the battery so I'm going to show you that next the bike's awake, it's on, and I'm gonna hit eject and then listen. Here, click over here, and just for a few seconds, it it makes this button accessible. And I'm pushing pretty hard, but it's kind of a, press it one more time. There we go, oh boy. A little bit of extra effort there. Here it is, this is the battery. This is about 10 pounds. And they come in two sizes as well, two capacities. Both batteries are 48 volts. And the one we've got here is 15.9 amp hours, but they also have the 20.5 amp hour high capacity battery. So 814 watt hours, all the way up to 983, almost a kilowatt hour of capacity. It's got a little handle at the top here that folds down and sort of clicks into place. And the interesting thing about this battery is that when you take it out, just sort of slide it, there we go. There isn't really a track it just sort of slides into this box space and then it plugs into that magnetic energy bus Rosenberger socket at the bottom and, and then you're ready to go. You can just close the side door and it locks into place. There's this little metal piece here. But what I discovered on my way back from picking this up, it was raining and I took the battery out because this is actually kind of heavy for my car rack. I have like a, a hitch rack that it's kind of limited. And I thought, you know, oh man, we're like 72 pounds. That's kind of a lot. So I took the battery out to be easier on my car. And when I did that, I realized that this door doesn't stay shut. So I tried, I, I pushed on it, you know, and I was like, okay, it, hopefully it stays. And of course it didn't. So by the time I was home, it was open like this and rainwater had gotten inside. And I did my best to dry it. But one thing I, I would recommend is if you buy this bike, maybe get like a rubber band or like a Velcro strap or something, and that can keep the door closed. And maybe it would also keep this from happening, whatever's going on down here. Maybe that just needs to be glued again. Um, I don't really know what the issue is. You can charge the, the battery while it's in the bike. And here's that Rosenberger uh, charging port on the side. And it's got this little plastic cover with a little leash so it won't get lost. And it, it clicks into place magnetically. The same uh, charging port is built into the base of the battery. So they, they both do the same thing. And one, one accessory I did not include for this review, because it's so big and heavy, is the charger. So it's 4.5 amps, really awesome, but it's like two and a half pounds compared to like one and a half pounds for a lot of other chargers. And it's just, it's big, it takes up a lot of space. So maybe I would put that in a pannier or something, but I, I really feel like for me, it's a lot more enjoyable to have the bike naked like this. So here it is, this is the 10 pound battery, super high capacity, 48 volts, 15.9 amp hours, lithium ion. I do appreciate that it's removable because you're gonna be able to avoid extreme heat and cold. The cold is gonna take the capacity down to about half in terms of your range. So it's, it's not as hard on the cells from my understanding. It's more, it just kind of, it makes them cold and then they don't give you as much range. Heat, on the other hand, you know, if it's a really hot day and maybe you're parking this in your hot garage or something, that can degrade the cells over time. So being able to park the fairly large, heavy bike in the garage, take the battery out, bring it inside, that's gonna help extend the life of your battery pack. And I think it's worth doing. And then, you know, you get that fast charge and you're ready to go again. So we just kind of, there we go, clicks into place. And now the touchscreen doesn't work. I'm gonna have to press that button on the bottom. This display takes quite a while to boot up. That's another one of my complaints. I like to just hop on the bike and go. And one thing I've learned about some of the torque sensors is that they calibrate while the bike is booting up. So if, if you're ready to go, you hit the power button, you start pedaling, you might 
you might set the settings a little bit off. Like now they expect that, oh, the zero point is with a little bit of pressure because they're pedaling. So anyway, we're good. It's completely booted up now. We've got our speed and kilometers per hour, levels of assist one through three. You can navigate through these using the plus and minus buttons, which is really handy. I, I don't like to have to take my hand off while I'm riding and really even to look down that far to get feedback from the display, that's kind of a bummer to me. So part of me is like, oh great, you got your you know, cell phone right there on the stem. But remember, it doesn't tell you your current speed. And that's one of my favorite things to see is like, how fast am I going? Oh, you know, am, am I obeying the laws? Sometimes the bike trails have um, lower limits. Up in the top left, there's 3G. So this thing actually has like over the air updates and when you make adjustments on your phone, I think it like downloads them. I love that they've got battery percentage right here, 95%. It's not just like five dots. It would be really nice if they had range, uh, just so that you could get some idea of how much further you're gonna be able to go given whatever level of assist you're in. It's a little bit more dynamic. That's something I'm seeing from the other companies and it's, it's not available here. So top right is a little light indicator and it's sort of angled down right now. And so I think that's just the standard running lights. This one, it's like 15 white LEDs. They're on at all times. And then the headlight, again, metal casing. It is a little bit adjustable. You can aim it down. Really nice. It's not gonna be able to, people are probably not gonna steal this the same way. It's not gonna get uh, damaged at bike racks. It's not a plasticky thing. This is really solid, really, really hardcore light and it angles down. Gosh, it's so bright. So you're not gonna blind drivers and oncoming traffic. It really is designed to go downwards. 600 lumens in its default mode. And then if we press the light button right here again, it gives us this blue like brights, which now it's just, it's just intense. So great job with the headlight strummer. Here's the rear light that I was talking about. Five LEDs across the top. And I think they're like six on the bottom and they shine down for if you had that license plate going on, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the brake levers here. There's that bright mode that I was talking about. So remember we get brights and we get regen activation, very cool. So we're back here at the display. If we tap it, we get some other readouts. So clock, trip speed. So I think that's like kind of your average trip speed. Trip distance, trip time, and then back to the, the start. So it just cycles around. So we can switch back and forth between the different menus, you know, locking the bike, powering it off, the sensor, moving it, it does have walk assist. And then the menu, um, notice you have to push a little bit extra. So there's the bike, you can adjust the brake, the torque sensors, reset the trip and total distance, Bluetooth, turn that on and connect it to your phone. Uh, the different settings, sort of the, the pin that we talked about, change the units, battery, time, the background so you can invert this to dark, which I kind of like. You know, see, it's a lot less bright and intrusive, and if you're riding at night, it doesn't ruin your, your night vision, so that's really cool. Startup, alarm, no pin set. So this is all back to using a pin versus using your phone for keyless. I guess at this point, I'm gonna press the button again, press it again, and it goes back into riding. T to me, it's sort of odd that it's so long like this, like, the display itself is tiny, but they've got this huge plastic thing. And I think that's just the brain, maybe like motor controller. Um, coming back to the app, so I, I just booted it up and it says, welcome. So it shows my bike, it says unlocked. You can set a pin to lock this, or you can use your smartphone. So when you come near the bike, I think that's when sort of the Bluetooth wireless connection would say, oh, okay, they're nearby, unlock the bike. And that's a pretty cool feature. There are no keys for this bike, you'll notice. It's all electronically locked. And this is almost like a key fob for a fancy car. You come up to it and it's like boop, boop, but it does it automatically. Uh, battery, 84% on the app, it says 95% on the bike itself. That's a little bit confusing. There we go, error, Stromer could not be locked, so that's fine. Trip distance, average trip time. Then there's a map, but it's in Europe. I'm not in Europe. And then we've got the, uh, the different sensors. So see, we can change the pedal sensor, the brake sensor, motor tuning, speed, torque, agility, really cool stuff. And that would make the bike feel a lot sportier, but of course I'd be burning power a lot faster too. So it's, it's all trade-offs. We've got some settings here. We can change the pin. That's what I was talking about. So you can manually lock the bike if you don't want to use a phone and then auto lock language, German. Okay. We want English. There we go. Let's go back. The app is pretty cool. 
In addition to the keyless entry, this thing also has GPS theft recovery, which apparently works pretty well. I've talked to the new wheel in San Francisco about this. Um, sounds like they've, they've seen customers lose their bikes and they've recovered all of them using that, that GPS um, tracking system, which is, is pretty cool. And that goes back to uh, having like the, the 3G integration right there in the bike. I'm gonna go ahead and pedal along on this thing. You can hear how it sounds. Trail. Very stable. So wider tires, even on gravel. And the suspension fork, while it doesn't have a whole lot of travel built in, so it's 30 millimeters, you definitely notice it. And I think the weight of the bike, there's a sense that it's just very solid. So even if you hit something and it it's jarring, um, there's more mass that has to get bucked around before it bucks your body. So I actually really, I like that feeling. Although again, being heavy, it means that the bike itself is a little bit more difficult to start and to lift and to pedal. Take it out here into the street, do some shifting. Oh, and the shifter, that's another area that I wanted to comment on. So even though it's it's a really nice drivetrain, Shimano Dior XT, and the shifter looks pretty nice, it only has the one-way high lever, right? So I have to use my pointer finger to pull that. I can't use my thumb for both. And the reason that matters to me is I like to use my pointer finger for the brakes and just always be ready to stop and then shift like this. So, you know, I, I wish they would have used Shimano Dior or so, something that has the two-way trigger right here instead of the one-way. The good news is they give you four clicks on that low lever so you can dump gears if you're approaching a hill like I am here and you're like, uh-oh, we gotta get ready to climb. You can just dump the gears pretty efficiently. And because this is not a mid-drive, you don't have to worry about like shift detection or just mashing the gears as much because it's really just you putting power in. Hub motors have the advantage of being independent from the pedaling drivetrain. So they're not putting additional uh, force onto the chain and the sprockets and stuff like that, which is, it's just, it's kind of nice, but the, the motor isn't gonna get a mechanical advantage the same way that a mid-drive would. Um, so it really just has one gear and that's the, the diameter of the wheel and the tire. Okay guys, we're looking down at those 170 millimeter Gossamer FSA cranks, hollow spindle, light, very rigid. Unbranded, but nice platform pedals here with the fixed diamond pins, 52 tooth steel chain ring, narrow wide, so it really grabs that chain. It's not gonna fall off as easily. And then we've got a guard on the outside to protect your pants and maybe the bottom bracket a little bit, sort of like a bash guard if you come into contact with a log or something like this. In the rear, we've got 11 to 42 tooth, 11 speed drivetrain. Shimano Dior XT with the one-way clutch. It locks it down, so it's just a lot tighter. It's not slopping around, but then you can unlock it. The gray lever just slides forward, and that allows you to take the rear wheel off or perform some drivetrain maintenance a little bit easier. Um, we are using the 600 watt, still 44 Newton meters of torque, Sino Drive 2. That's the motor in the back. I'm gonna pedal along in the highest level of assist. See if you can hear it. I really can't when I'm riding. It's very smooth and dynamic, and it's very noticeable, um, especially in the higher levels of assist when you start to put some real effort into uh, pedaling. And then as you start to brake, even just a little bit, you start to feel the regen kicking in. It's really neat. It's a neat setup. Very few companies are going this route anymore because I think it's more expensive, it's more complex. Um, it's it's a lot more refined this feeling it just goes goes back to the whole like sports car supercar kind of feel this is much more connected with you as a rider the disappointing thing is that with the added weight well that feels disconnected to you so it's like if you're used to motorcycles and stuff this is still going to feel super light and, and awesome if you're used to bicycles this is going to feel really heavy and kind of like a vehicle um and i guess it's worth trying, you know, go into a shop and do a test ride. See if it, see if it suits your needs.
super quiet, even over the bumpy grass. Okay, from here you can see the drivetrain and the suspension. I'm just gonna cruise along. Keep in mind that the suspension is a little bit low. I should be pumping it up with the shock pump. I don't have one with me, but that's something to kind of keep in mind if you sense that it's bottoming out or just getting a little bit too soft. Kind of getting used to that mirror too. It's a nice feature to have when you're riding in traffic. So smooth. So it's getting to be evening and I wanted to show you guys the lights again. Just get that, that bright mode. I mean, they're really, they're really capable and this is the standard mode. There's the bright. Again, 900 lumens. We've changed that to like dark mode. I'm gonna go up these stairs. It's not too many stairs, but just try to give you an idea of what that looks like and what you have to deal with if you get this bike. First, you know, sew the kickstand, lift the front, drag it up a little bit like that. There we go. So it's, it's not too bad if you've only got a, a small flight and then we can get the walk mode. So we just click that and then move. And it says hold the plus button. And there we go. A little bit easier. <laughs> okay, I know you guys like the third person viewpoint. So I got my buddy here riding along with me. I'm gonna tap out of this back to the main display, turn on the brights and we'll just do some cruising. There we go. <laughs> good job, man. You get the brake lights? <laughs> Doing a pretty good job. You'll aim it down. I really like this headlight. We were talking about the brake levers and stuff. So these are TRP, which is like the higher end version of Tektro. Um, TDCM, Shimano components, pretty good setup. Go ahead, pass me a little bit. There's that acceleration again. Whew. Uh, it has like an inclinometer built in. I'm in the highest level. Feels pretty good. I'm not having to stand up or anything. We're climbing. I'll let, we should stop now. I'm torturing my friend. <laughs> I really have enjoyed riding this Stromer and using it, but I think it's a, it's a great product for someone who maybe wants a car replacement. You live in the city. I've got a friend, Virginia. She has Amigo electric bikes in Toronto. You know, it's a big city in Canada and she sells a lot of these bikes and they do a great job supporting it. They get them all dialed in. And I think that's really who this is for. Uh, so I hope this has helped you. Again, back at the website, I have all the details everything from like standover height to length and the weight, the weight of the, each part of the bike, like the battery and stuff. My goal is to help you make an informed decision because this is so expensive and sometimes you go into a dealer and it's like, 
it's all you know rainbows like there's there's nothing to even consider it's just like the best and you want the best but the truth is it does come with the extra weight and a little bit of complexity and i feel like the app could use a little bit of improvement and stuff as cool as the bike is they have they, they continue to update it like with that nice horn it used to be a lot more annoying I love that they're using the Pirelli tires. I love the brakes. The feel of the bike is very quiet, smooth, regenerative braking. Uh, but again, it comes with some trade-offs. So anyway, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com. I do also have a section in the forum specifically for Stromer. So you can comment on this yourself and maybe add your thoughts on, on the different models. They also have ST2 and I, man, I've been covering these bikes for a long time. The old like ST1s were really cool. Totally different design though. All, all the new frames have this like Omni interface and stuff and they have this really futuristic look. Um, so I appreciate the direction the company's going. I'm glad that they're still offering support in North America and pushing this forward. I wish them the best. Uh, since I have reviewed some of the older products, there's a little comparison tool at the site so you can see the stats back to back. I hope that helps you guys. I love you. I really hope you're doing well right now and just enjoying the beautiful surroundings, getting out on your bike with some friends. Ride safe, and we'll see you next time.